guys and welcome to another video. This time we are going to be looking at how I embroidered this shirt jacket that I found secondhand. Really just wanted to challenge myself to make something upcycled in my wardrobe that people would go, oh, where did you get that? And I would be like, well, I embroidered it myself. So this was like something I found in a secondhand is Zara. Um, I feel like everyone has one of these pieces in their staple wardrobe. A shirt jacket is a shacket. And it kind of means that you can kind of layer with it. It's a really cool piece, I think. Anyway, I wanted to try out lots of different techniques in combination, like couching, applique, beading. So I kind of just went with the flow a little bit, but ultimately it took a lot of planning and a little bit of sketchbooking as well. So I'll tell you a bit about that in a minute. The main technique I used to kind of get an idea of what it would look like was using these kind of paper drawn out stencils, like here, I've drawn this bird. It's just pinned to the piece so I can get an idea of what it could look like if I embroidered something on there. And that was really useful to kind of move shapes around and get an idea. Then I kind of used um, sketchbooking to aid me to understand what I wanted to use in the way of shapes and what designers I wanted to look at, what colour palette I was going to use, all of these things and I kind of sampled a little wee bit, so some of my drawings, um, just kind of inspired by Matisse and designers that were using these big kind of organic shapes, um, here's Matisse, and like use these to influence my samples, so I did some embroidery samples which you'll see hanging on the wall. Um, just here and here, where I used couching and applique to test out my, uh, my ideas and my colour palette. And this really helped me to understand what I was going to do on the shacket. Okay, so here I am showing you the kind of process I'm using. I'm using the stencil as a kind of guide to draw out a design. And I already had some beads which I knew I wanted to use as kind of the stem. So from there I kind of drew um, where I wanted the embroidery to be and I kind of knew what kind of stitches I was going to use to make them stand out, which was a chain stitch. And I'm just using a like a washable pen I think this pen is also rubbable, so it has a little rubber on the end, which is fine. So don't panic if you see me drawing on my jacket. But anyway, from here, I kind of knew that I was going to start embroidering um, and using some yarns that I had and some beads that I had that have been sitting around for so long. So, right, here we have the process of how I chain stitch. And obviously you can see where I've drawn the line and I'm just working my way around. Um, I like to work with wool yarns. They stand out and they also have these beautiful colours. I get mine from a local designer or a local shop owner that has lots of gorgeous wools. 
Um, I'll link it in the description, but anyway, um, she's in Edinburgh, so you'll have to find your own or go online, but there's plenty of yarns, and I think it's like a four-ply yarn. Maybe it's just a two-ply, but it's quite a thick yarn anyway. But um, yeah, I like the way it creates this almost like cruel work look to it, and it really does stand out with this lovely olive colour that I've picked. Um, so yeah. can really see the beading that I've created. I've actually used, um, I'm showing you how I'm doing a knot as well, um, <laughs> just like a beady. Basically I bead weave using yarn or a very fine thread and I just basically sew the beads together before I apply it to the shacket and that seems to secure it quite well and then when I lay it on I can kind of loop the yarn that I'm using to secure it to the shacket over the beads and that's like doubly secure in my view and this I think is a very good way so that beads don't pop off I mean I have done that thing where you sew in a line and you like sew the beads on a it takes ages and b they do break easily and get pulled off so this is a reliable way I like to do it I'm focusing on the applique and basically all the applique is is just sticking one piece of paper paper fabric onto another piece of fabric and turning under the edges now some people like to have like almost like an interlining and then they can kind of um, stitch the decorative colored fabric on top cut around the kind of interlining shape and then fold the edges under and then they stitch it on there's different processes in this case, I'm just going to try a bit of machining, which is called basting, where I could just roughly sew down the shape, and in this case I'm using paper as well, quite a hard, thick card, and I'm going to just baste it, and then I can turn it under and hand stitch it down later. But in this point of the game, I'm literally just playing with placement, um, just like I've placed this um, cut-out piece of felt on the back. I'm trying out what works and I'm kind of taking away bits and putting bits back. So it was a bit of trial and error really. Right, here I'm using my free machine embroidery foot and I've got it on the free machine setting where I can kind of extend the length of the stitches using the machine and get kind of a satin effect but what I've done is to just base down this decorative fabric on top is actually draw lines where the flower shape petals are so when I tuck the piece down and applique it to the piece of fabric it will hide all the raw edges but anyway there's different techniques for different people in applique but here I am just playing and trying to get design going for myself.
So here now I'm trying to place the potential applique pieces onto my shacket. But what actually ended up happening is I actually started to simplify this design. I think I went a bit like any artist does a bit too much, too many flowers, too many things. And my boyfriend actually really helped me to just slim it down and relax. So. And finally, to wrap things up, I did a bit of beading, which was my bird, but I did the thing which I said I wouldn't do, which is um, hand stitch each bead on individually. And unfortunately, I think this doesn't wear as well. What I would do on hindsight, if you do want to put beading on, honestly, it takes a lot less time if you do this. You create a string of beads, like a necklace almost, of the beads that you want to use in a row. And then you just loop them on using another thread once you've finished the necklace or the long length of beads. And then you just hand stitch them on and that is more secure. On hindsight, I wish I had done that. It's more time saving and it is more um, like robust. It's a bit more cowboy like this one, so...